Jai Radha Madhava Sundari Yeah, yeah. 
ಶಾಲಾಕ್ರಿಯಾಮಶ್ರೇಷ್ಠ ರಾಧಾಕುಂಡಂ ಗಿರಿಪರಂ ಮಹೋ ರಾಧಿಕಾಧಾವಸ್ರೀಗುರುಂ ತಂ ನೋಸ್ಮೆ ವಂಚಕಲ್ಪತರೂಪ್ಯಸ್ಥಾಕೃಪಾಸಿಂಧುವ್ಯೈವ ಪತೀತಾ ಭವಾನೇಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ನಿಖಿಲಾಶ್ರುತಿಮಲೇರತ್ನಮಾಲಿತಿರಾಜಿತಪಂಕಜಂತ ಆಜೀಮುಕ್ತಕುಲೈರುಪಶ್ಯಾಮನಂ ಪರಿತಸ್ಥರಿಣಾಂ ಸಂಶ್ರಿಯಾಮಿ ನಾರಿತರಿ ಚಿರಕರುಣಾವತೀರ್ಣಾಕಲು ಸಮರ್ಪಯಿತುನ್ನತೋಜ್ಪಲರಾಸನ್ ಸ್ವಭಕ್ತಿ ಹಾರೀಪುರತ ಸುಂದರಾಧ್ಯುತಿಕದಂಬಸಂದೀಪಿ ಸದಾ ಹೃದ ಖಂದರೆ ಸ್ಫುರೋ ವಾಸಚಿನಂದನ ಅಜಾನ್ಮಲಂಬಿತ ಭುಜೋ ಕನಕಾವದಾತು ಸಂಕೀರ್ತನೈಕಪಿತರೋ ಕಮಲಾಯ ತಕ್ಷು ವಿಶ್ವಂಬರೋ ದ್ವಿಜಾಬರೋ ಜುಗಧಾರ್ಮಪಾಲೋ ವಂದೇ ಜಗತ್ ಪ್ರಿಯ ಕರೋ ಕರುಣಾವತಾರು ಲಾಲಿನಿ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಸ್ವರೂಪಾಯ ಗೌರಂಗ ಸುಹೃದಾಯ ಭಕ್ತ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಪ್ರಾಧನಾಯ ಗದಾಧರ ನಮಸ್ತ ಗದಾಧರ ನಮಸ್ತು ವ್ಯಂಜಸ್ಯಾಗುರಂಗ ಜೀವನ ಗದಾಧರ ನಮಸ್ತು ವ್ಯಂಜಸ್ಯಾಗುರಂಗ ಜೀವನ ನೀಲಂ ಬೋಧಿತೇ ಸದಾ ಸ್ವೀರ ಕೀಪನ್ ಬಿಥಂ ಬಾಂಧವಂ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ಭಾಗವತಿ ಕಥಾಮಧೀರ ಸಂಜೀವಯ ಭಾತಿಯ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ಭಾಗವತ ಸದಾ ಸ್ವನಾಯನಾಶ್ರೂಪಾಯ ನೈ ಪೂಜಯ ಗೋಸ್ವಮೀ ಪ್ರಾಭರೋ ಗದಾಧರ ವಿಭೋರ್ ಭೂಯಾತ್ಮೇಕಿ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣಾ ಸಿಂಧೋ ದೀನಬಂಧೋ ಜಗಾತ್ಪಥೆ ಗೋಪೇಶ ಗುಪೀಕಾ ಕಂತ ರಾಧಾ ಕಂತ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ರಾಧೇ ಬೃಂದವನಾಧೀಶೆ ಕರುಣಮೃತವಾಹಿನಿ ಕೃಪಾಯ ನಿಜ ಪಾದಬ್ಜಾದಶನ್ಮಯ ಪ್ರದೀಯತ ಭಕ್ತಿಯಾಪರಾಧಲಕ್ಷಾಯ ಕ್ಷಿಪ್ತಾಕ್ಷಕಮಾಧಿತರಂಗಮಾಧೆ ಕೃಪಾಮಯಿ ತ್ವಂ ಶರಣ ಪ್ರಪನ ವೃಂದೇನ್ಮಸ್ತೆ ಚರಣಾರವಿಂದ ವೃಂದೇನ್ಮಸ್ತೆ ಚರಣಾರವಿಂದ ಶ್ರೀಲ ಗುರುದೇವ್ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀಮನ್ ಮಹಾಪ್ರಭು ಕಿ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಸದ್ಭುಜ ಗೌರಾಂಗ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಹರಿನಾಮ ಸಂಕೀರ್ತನ ಕಿ ಜಯ ತಿರುಪಾಪ ಮಹೋತ್ಸವ ತೀರ್ಥಿ ಶ್ರೀ ಗದಾಧರ ಪಂಡಿತ್ ಕಿ ಜಯ ತಿರುಪಾಪ ಮಹೋತ್ಸವ ತೀರ್ಥಿ ಶ್ರೀ ಸಚಿನಂದ ಮಾವಿ ಠಾಕುರ್ ಭಕ್ತಿನಾಥ
गोर भक्त वृंद की जय गोर हरी वो गुड इवनिंग वेलकम फिनलैंड यात्रा की जय एंड ऑल्सो वेलकम टू ऑल ऑफ यू लाइन कनेक्टेड एंड टुडे वी आर सेलिब्रेटिंग थिरुबाब महोत्सव और डिसअपियरेंस day of sri takur bhakti vinod on one side and sri pandit gadadhar on another side hmm. so as usual we will try to share some words about it <clears throat> and of course beginning by emphasizing the importance of these sacred occasions that we receive in each one of these celebrations no, there's no uh every of these celebrations in our panjika our calendar are not just like mere casualties okay one up one appearance there and a disappearance there but there's always a purpose mm-hmm. especially in tirupati mahotsav when we can enter union through separation if you will mm-hmm. enter joy through sacred distress or something <laughs> that's what rai ramananda replied to mahaprabhu when he say what's was it what suffering was the greatest suffering say krishna bhakta viraha bina dukkha nahi aur apart from separation from the the poor the bhakta i don't know of any other distress he will say <laughs> but even in that distress there is of course paradoxical joy paradoxical sweetness and that's our entry point the way of entering the eternity with this personality is advancing through separation so today we are receiving double opportunity for that since we are celebrating two tirubab mahotsav which happened to fall on the same exact same day so godadar pandit and bhakti no thakur two very crucial personalities especially for us as we spoke briefly in the morning today in our bhakti not paribar and of course in a day like this we could very we could speak about from different angles we could speak about godadar pandit and his lila the description of his uh, ontology as given in, in shastra we can speak about bhakti no thakur in regards like him being the epitome of modernity in gaudiya vaishnavism or the approach the modern approach and interaction with modernity in the context of gaudiya vedanta but with your permission i would like to concentrate in in another direction today i'm trying to to meditate a little bit about the connection between these two since we are speaking about the two at the same time i like to concentrate on on the disposition of service that we find in both pandit sri gadadhar and thakur bhakti not hmm? and how their moods match very deeply hmm? and how we should be able to establish those types of correspondences between the two in order to, to further grasp who they are and what's the contribution Uh, they they have made in our sampradaya mm-hmm. so so we will st- therefore we'll try to speak about them how to say in english like interchangeably somehow or maybe that's an, another word that's like, that's like if you speak about bhakti or as if he is gadadhar oh no that's not the term there I mean, so you which is the term yeah, yeah 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 <laughs> combining the two personalities and showing how the two of them of course are not replacing each other or something like that but they are pretty much aligned in the same spirit of service basically mm-hmm. so let's begin by the apparent coincidence of just passing away on the same day of course we'll see there's no coincidence at all and there's a very deep <laughs> reason for this but let's analyze to begin with uh how they are why how they are passing away on, on one particular same day and how this corresponds with their mode of service mm-hmm. and also somehow we are one of the main celebrations these days will be rath yatra the world will be uh, celebrating what uh, three days in three days or something so it's friday i think it's three days yeah friday mm-hmm. in chaitanya dham mm-hmm. okay so so somehow that's also connected with all this because rath yatra uh we will be speaking in a few days and we were have spoken some weeks ago but somehow rath yatra has to be 
I mean, it's one of the most esoteric celebrations in our Gaudiya tradition. And they really speak also about a very, a very needy moment in the life of the Absolute, according to the Gaudiya lens, how we Gaudiyas read Ratha Yatra, how we interpret Jagannath Puri in connection to Kurukshetra and to certain need of service that Sri Radha has there. And Mahaprabhu is going through all that in Ratha Yatra and so on. And today's description of the mood of service of Kadadar Pandit Bhakti Thakur is quite in line with what Ratha Yatra is ultimate about, which is again a very specific disposition of service in a very specific moment of great great necessity in the life of the absolute and all the, of course remuneration that can come to us as blessings in that connection so today is amabasya which means the new moon which means no moon at all basically in, co in contrast with purnim mahaprabhu is born on purnim and srila sila maharaj we read today in the morning he will make this poetic um this depiction of Sri Krishna being born on a half moon, Astami, Sri Radha being born on another half moon, Astami, Janmastami, Radastami. You put the two half moons together and you have one full moon, which is Purnim, which is Gaur Purnim, which is Mahaprabhu's appearing with the heart and halo, Srilasida Maharaj's words of Sri Radha. Radha Bhava Duty Suvalitam Nomi Krishna Sarupa. So you have the analogy with the two half moons and the full moon, but if you want to add to the planetary depiction, you have got other planet appearing in the no moon. <laughs> so Mahaprabhu can have full moon. Radha as Gadadhar appears on the no moon. Gadadhar Pandit, as we know, or as we don't know, and we are getting to know, is Sri Radha <laughs> appearing in Gaur Lila. In one sense, Mahaprabhu is... Um, it is described as Radha and Krishna combined, but the combination is dynamic. And technically speaking, he is Krishna in the mood of Radha. Again, Radha Bhava, duty, Subhalta, Mom, Krishna, Sarupa. So Gadadhar is also there in Gorlila in the form of Gadadhar. So for Mahaprabhu to be full moon, for Mahaprabhu to experience the half moon of Sri Radha, hmm? oh, Hari. <laughs> He's trying to increase his services position. So that it's valid, no problem. <laughs> it's hot, so I may end up drinking the two of them. So for, for half moon Krishna to experience the half moon of Shirada, if you will, <laughs> and becoming a full moon, someone else has to become an empty moon, if you will, giving himself, herself fully, so the Mahaprabhu can become all that he wants to be, all that he wants to taste. Mm -hmm. So that's Gadadhar Pandit, again, emptying himself, herself, Sri Radha, Gadadhar. So Mahaprabhu can be Mahaprabhu, basically, and be all that he's destined to be. And as we mentioned, that so-called emptiness of Gadadhar, emptying himself, so Mahaprabhu can taste Radha Bhav, it's a fullness unto itself, properly understood. It's a full giving disposition in the most needy moment of his beloved, basically. Acquiring the particular mood and situation and dedication, level of dedication, to match the need of the object of his love. And as we already mentioned more than one time, in this sense, Mahaprabhu is this most complete form of the, of the Absolute, Paratattva Simma in which Krishna is tasting something that he was not able to taste in Raja Lila. Mm -hmm. So in one sense, Gaur Lila is the most natural extension of Krishna Lila, Parishista Lila, sometimes described like the epilogue, appendix type Lila, <laughs> or the afterthought of Krishna Lila, basically. Mm -hmm. And Krishna Lila makes full circle there. Mm -hmm. So naturally, Gaur Lila is the most natural conclusion of Krishna Lila, the most natural reach or the most extended reach of Krishna Lila. Hmm? And for Gaur Lila not only to exist, but for Gaur Lila to be successful, we need Mahaprabhu tasting Radha Bhav. And for Mahaprabhu tasting Radha Bhav, we need Radha allowing him to do so. <laughs> In other words, Gadadhar Pandit is Sri Radha giving himself, so Krishna's Mahaprabhu can be successful and the whole Gaur Lila may not be a failure again. <laughs> 
as Krishna Lila was subjectively perceived by Krishna Vrindavan. Like I wanted to taste something, and this the the rules of the game did not fully facilitate me that experience. You no, know? like before coming as as Krishna in Braj, as we know, he was, as, for example, let's go for a minute to Treta Yuga. And he appeared as Sri Ramachandra. And as we know, the sages in Danda Karanya wanted to relate with Ram in, in, in Madhurya Bhav. And, and Ram found himself like limited, constrained by the rules of the game. You know? Game means Lila, and each Lila has some rules. You know? Like any game. You want to play a game, if I tell Brigupa, let's play some chess now. And I start to move the pieces as I like, and I do like this, and, and you're telling, what are you doing, Maharaj? You're not playing the game. I, I'm doing whatever I like. I said, oh, you cannot do whatever you like. To play any game, there are rules, so the game can be actually played. So the same way, Lila means game, play. But there are rules to the Lila, to each Lila, and there are different rules to each Lila. So in Ram Lila, Bhagavan found himself constrained. I cannot relate with you in Madhurya Bhav because according to this game, to this play, the rules are I am Mariat Purushottam and I am given to show the perfect example of a king. So I accept today Kapatni Brat, one only one wife, what to speak of many wives, what to speak of Parakya Bhav. <laughs> I will totally transgress the rules of the game. So the game the game will be ruined in itself. So we will have a new game, a new play and if in a few years, I will come in my form of Krishna, and then there will be a separate set of rules there. It's it's a more, it's a broader game, if you will. There are other possibilities in terms of relationship, and so as we know, Krishna manifests his lila and braj, and sages of Danda Karanya appear as gopis. The game is more has another rules that allow another type of movement, but even in Krishna lila, in Vrindavan, Krishna found himself. The game is not enough. These rules still constrain me in certain ways and do not allow me to reach certain experiences that I would like to have. So I need another play altogether, another game, another Lila needs to be invoked to allow me to play the game, basically. I want to play. <laughs> so Gore Lila is there to allow that. That's the final game, if you will, the ultimate Lila. The most important Lila, arguably, even and in connection to Krishna. And again, Gadadhar Pandit is that person who is allowing Gaur Lila to happen, allowing Gaur Lila to be successful because he is providing us Radha and Gaur Lila all that Krishna needs to receive hmm, to achieve success as Mahaprabhu. Hmm. So Gadadhar Pandit is arguably the most important figure, in arguably the most important Lila. Hmm. So here I'm sharing also a, a brief trailer of some notes I've been taking for the next book project so with your permission hopefully that may I'm supposed to be promoting my first book but somehow I'm, I'm, I'm mostly speaking about the next one maybe that that happens to, to authors I don't know what do you think <laughs> so Mahaprabhu again and it's important to speak about all this so we further understand who is Gadada and also who is Bhakti Vinotaku Mahaprabhu is Krishna his most as I like but upgraded version and, and of course, if Gaur Lila includes Krishna in his most upgraded version, it has to include Radha in her most upgraded version as well, to match Krishna's upgrading. And again, that's got other pundit. So Gaur is Krishna in his most upgraded version, Gadadhar is Radha in her most upgraded version, exhibiting her most comprehensive dedication, giving herself in a very unique form hmm, to serve hmm, Krishna's ultimate form as Mahaprabhu. Hmm. Sometimes I like to put it, we know Krishna's Supreme Personality of Godhead, but Mahaprabhu could be called Supreme Personality of Krishna. <laughs> hmm. And Sri Radha could be the Supreme Personality of the Goddess, <laughs> and Gadadhar the Supreme Personality of Radha, <laughs> if you want to play out the implications of that. So anyhow, that's in connection to Gadadhar Pandit and Sri Radha in this unique moment, passing, disappearing on Amavasya and what this Amavasya represents, this particular giving disposition. And similarly, Bhaktivinoda Thakur disappeared on this exact same day, 
with some, of course, centuries in between, not the exact same day, same year, but showing a very similar disposition that that of Gadadar Pandit hmm? in connection to a famous thing that he said regarding when he was reaching his final years about leaving his body in Kurukshetra. So mostly we came to know of this from Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur once he said, he will say this type of things, like Srila Siddhanta will say, mostly everything that <clears throat> our Guru Maharaj will say, mostly were revolutionary things. <laughs> Generally you wouldn't find some like, easy going statement, but something that will shake your foundation. <laughs> so he will say once they were doing Parikran, he will say, Brindavan is for shallow thinkers. <laughs> you can imagine. For, for, for that, Sri Siamar himself says, till that day, I thought that Brindavan was the zenith of all theistic conception and attainment. And now Gumash was telling, that's for shallow thinkers. And then he said, yes, those people who are people of real bhajan will point to Kurukshetra. So Sri Siamar was totally like, What's the meaning of this? Because he knew it. There's, there is some deeper purpose in, in this. And of course, we know he connected that with what Bhakti Notakur said. At, at the very end of his life, he said, I would like to leave my body in Kurukshetra. And this may seem like unusual because generally, for Gaudiya Vaishnavas, the, the main focus will be one of the three main Gaudiya dams, Puri, Navadri, Raj. Bhakti Notakur point to a fourth one, Kurukshetra, and the implication of that, of course, in brief words, is in Kurukshetra what happened was not only Bhagavad Gita, but even before that, Krishna met with the Vrajavas after a century of separation, basically. And eventually he met with Radha and the gopis in a secluded place, and Krishna said, well, here we are. He spoke a little bit some level of diplomacy and bureaucracy well, to say, well, life takes people away and join them together. And here we are again by the force of destiny. And the Gopi is like, you are destiny. <laughs> <laughs> now the Ishwarya is coming to the foreground for a minute just to chastise Krishna and then recedes. No. <laughs> the Gopi sometimes will say, then, you are a God. What are you talking to us? No. <laughs> and that recedes again and increase their intimacy. And at one point, of course, Krishna tells to the gopis, well, we can meet together again. We can reunite as usual. And Radha is there in front of Krishna. And she's basically telling him that's not possible. Hmm? Because where is Brindavan? Where is the Jamuna? Where is your flute? Where is the peacock feather? Where are you? Where, where is my Krishna? Where is Braja Krishna? Aradhyo Bhagavan Brajesatana Jasta Dhamma Brindavan. Where is the Devis? Brajesatana Yas. He who is the son of Nanda Maharaj. But the Krishna there was the son of Vasudev, if you will. It was Dwarakish, Krishna, and elephants, and four arms sometimes. So she doesn't say that's not, there's no Brindavan. The playground is not in place. The stage is not in place to allow the, the drama of union to happen. So we cannot reunite. So Sila Siamaras will say, he will give like a contemporary example, like in a football game, like the ball is about to enter the, how do you say? Goal. The goal, okay, you call, and it's just taken out just after, just one second above before entering there. No? So it, it's almost there for the union. It's not happening. So Bhakti Notak will think at that moment, Sri Radha must be in the moment of great necessity. So much necessity of service she she has in that moment that I'd like to die in that eternal in that moment and enter that point for eternity you know, of assisting my Swamini in her moment of greatest necessity forever. That was the point he wanted to make. He didn't actually, he said, I would like to pass away in Kurukshetra, but interestingly, he never made any practical arrangements for that to happen. And he could have done so, but he never did. So he make, he wanted to make another point by saying that. Like, I want to leave my body and enter into a point in eternity that where, where the object of my service will be in the most needy moment, so I can give myself in the most comprehensive way. I want to serve Radha in the moment of her greatest necessity. That was basically Bhakti Thakur's statement by saying, I want to live in Kurukshetra. 
And of course, Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhanta will, will have these very interesting insights as we also share today in the morning. Not only what we mentioned, but he had this transcendental vision where he somehow realized the connection between Gorky Shordas Babaji and Sarup Damodar and Bhakti Nautakur and Angadadar Pandit. It's not that literally he was meaning they are the same person because we know that uh, Pandit uh, Thakur Bhakti not his Kamala Manjari, Gadar Pandit is Shirada. So it's not that he's trying to say they are the same person, but he was he saw he had some revelation of a very unique representation of that. There. Indeed, the, the pranam mantra for Bhakti no Thakur speaks about Gadadar Pandit. Namo Bhakti Vino Daya Sachidananda Namine. Gaur Shakti Swarupaya Rupanuga Parayate. <laughs> Gaur Shakti Swarupaya. It's a personification of the Shakti of Gaur, which means Gadadar Pandit. That's immediately connected with Bhakti no Thakur. So that, that, you cannot speak about one without including the other in some way or not. Then we see the, how, how tight these two personalities are, are there. Of course, Bhakti no Thakur is so tied to, to Gaur Lila in general. No? I mean, he's known for us as the seventh Goswami for many things, but one of the things is <clears throat> his contribution very much in the line of the Goswamis. Mm -hmm. But but all the things that Bhakti, most of the things Bhakti Nautakur did, as the Goswamis did, he did in, in, in terms of Gaur Lila. No? He rediscovered the Yoga Pith mm -hmm. and other places. He developed so many theological points in regarding Gaur Lila. If you study his Naudib Dhammahatmya, his Naudib Bhavataranga, you know, he rediscovered, he wrote all the things that the Goswami did mostly in connection to Vrindavan, Bhakti Nautakur did in connection to Naudib. And on top of that, in connection to today's point, his worship, his main point, focus of worship, his sister there were Gaur Gadadhar, which is a very unique contribution in our Parivar. He established the worship of Gorgadar in the Bhakti Nod Parivar. So we will speak next a little bit about that as well. So to begin with, some words then we shared about when Gadadar Pandit and Thakur Bhakti Nod disappear on Amabasya and what's the meaning of this Amabasya regarding giving oneself and particular services, position. Now we will speak a little bit about how they disappeared, not only when, so we can see it's not a mere a calendar coincidence. Oh, it disappeared the same day. But when we go deeper into their disposition of service, we'll see how they disappear. It's connected to when they disappear. It's just not a mere coincidence of facts. <clears throat> so let's begin with that other pundit. He disappeared in Jagannath Puri, in his place of residence called Torta Gopinath. Which is a very, very special place in Jagannath Puri, one of the most uh, esoteric <laughs> points in, in, in the whole down. And as we know, he resided there after Mahaprabhu established himself in Jagannath Puri. And he will give daily classes to, Bhag to Mahaprabhu, Bhagavad classes. And that they continue eternally in Nitya Naudu, as we have heard from the Charis. But in the Prakat Lila, that other pandit will school Mahaprabhu in his Radha Bhava project, if you want to call it like that, <laughs> by giving daily lectures on the Bhagavatam, which, which as Megumaraj likes to say, the Bhagavatam is not so much about Krishna, but about Krishna Prem. What's, what does it mean to love Krishna? And Radha is trying to instruct Krishna about that. What does it mean to love Krishna? Because that was she is about to love Krishna, and that's what Mahaprabhu wants to taste to love Krishna, love of Krishna. Mm -hmm. So, on a daily basis, Gadadar Pandit is schooling Mahaprabhu, mm -hmm. Radha giving Bhagavad class to Krishna. You don't want to miss that one. You take your notes, notebook there, <laughs> and giving on a daily basis some scars to, to Mahaprabhu. Radha have some scars no? so he can understand what this whole project about and eventually be successful, giving him Bhagavad Kata and the words of Srila Siddhar Maharaj on a daily basis, giving the wine of 
Harikata. This is Pranam Mantra that we recited in today's Mangala Charan. Sorry that I transgressed the usual. I could feel the what's going on, Maharaj, where you are going. <laughs> but it's on today's day. Nilam Bodhi Tati Sadasa Vidaha Kshepan Vitam Bandavam. So Sila is saying, at the shore of the blue ocean, Kada he he does he's not mentioning yet Kadada, but he's supporting his friend, giving support to his friend to Mahaprabhu by giving Srimad Bhagavati Katamadiraya Sanjivayam Bhatiya. She's giving Bhagavati Kata Madiraya, like the wine of Bhagavat Kata, Sanjivani, like a how do you say, like life giving tonic. So Mahaprabhu can Srimad Bhagavatam Sadasanayana Ashrupayanai Pujayam. I say in the same way that one worships the Bhagavatam with lamp and water and all these archana elements, Gadadar Pandit will have all the puja paraphernalia organically including his own <laughs> being. And the sattvic babs that will come will be you know, the tears coming, ashru, in turns, and that will be the you know, with his lamp like eyes, he will like Worship the Bhagavad. Hmm? And therefore, Goswami Prabhupada Gadhadara Vibhu Bhuyat Madhika Gati. May that one, the best of the Goswami Sri Gadhadara Prabhu, be my ultimate goal. And may I enter the current of that best of the Goswami. So after he's saying, from his eyes comes turrets of tears, Srila Srimala extends the poetic knowledge, may I enter the current of that best of the Goswami. May I enter the river of his tears that come from what he feels for the Bhagavad. <laughs> so in, in, in this section, it is described, Sri Rasya describes in this verse how that other pan is script speaking Bhagavad Kata to Mahaprabhu, and this is creating such wonderful effect in him. Mm -hmm. Indeed, that's that that's one of the meanings of the name Gadadar in a more esoteric interpretation. In a more general way, Gadhadhara means Gadhadhara. Gadhara means this is the holder, he who holds, and Gada means, how do you say, mace? No? It's the name of Vishnu, no? the holder of the mace. No? Four arms, one of them is, two of them are for chastising people like Swami Padmana, so mace. No? So, Generally, of course, in, in, in a tradition like Indian tradition, many people will receive God, the names of God, so Gadadhar and this and that, so on, no problem. So that's a more general meaning considering the Hindu social dynamics of the time. And in the deeper meaning, we could say also Gadadhar has another meaning. Gada in Sanskrit can also mean poison. And Adhara, that, that was how I was told. Then we have to do the corresponding <laughs> research with the local scholars. <laughs> and Adhara means lips. So Adharamrita like this. So in connection with Gada and Adhara, if you take poison lips, we could say that from Gadadhar lips, poison is coming. No, Of course, this is poetic, no? like implying he's giving poison to Mahaprabhu. In the sense that what's the result of Mahaprabhu when he's hearing that Bhagavad Kata, he's like having seizures and trembling and foam is coming from the mouth and, and tears coming and rolling on the ground. So it seems like, well, he's being, he's almost being, the, the feelings of separation are being triggered further. So it's like if venom is being, venom, you say, also being given. Now, of course, externally seems like poison, internally. So it's like, Externally seems like poison, internally is like nectar. Monier Williams. Okay. You continue with your continue. corresponding research. I know that Sanskrit lends itself to some way of connecting that. If not poison, we will find some appropriate yeah, 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 analogy yeah. for that. So. <laughs> so in this way, Gadadhar will speak Harikata, Bhagavad Kata daily to Mahaprabhu. Mahaprabhu will receive this in total Gopinath. We are going to the passing of Gadadhar there, but there's some stage to understand the significance of, of Tota Gopinath. And, uh, and Mahaprabhu will receive this 
instruction of the day and he then he will go back home, Gambira, and do his homework in Gambira, basically, you not know, trying to to incorporate what he heard from Godadar, to put that in practice, to chanting and hearing with his two tutors, Rai Ramananda and Sarup Damodar. And the result was considerably uh, successful, basically. Mahabharu crying and rolling and trying to, whatever, increasing his mood of separation and so on. But Gadadhar Pandit is not present there at one point, as we know. He totally disappears behind the curtains because, again, he's disappearing more and more by giving more and more of himself to Mahaprabhu to to be successful, basically. You know? Sometimes the example is, but in, in the, through the eyes of Bhav, Gadadhar Pandit in Tota Gopinath is seeing internally what Mahaprabhu is going through in, in the Gambira. You know? And realizing, okay, my student is doing pretty well. He's doing his homework very nicely. <laughs> Sometimes the example is given with a father trying to cheat, teach his son like to ride bicycle. In the beginning, the child will ride the bicycle with this, how to say, extra wheels. Mm -hmm. So there's no need for the father to be there, but he's there giving moral support, if you will. <laughs> and the child is getting some strength from that. And eventually they will take off these two wheels how do you call them? Training wheels. Training wheels, yeah. <clears throat> so the kid will be like more, oh, but the father is there accompanying the kid. And eventually the child can ride by her own, but the father is following closely and I'm here, everything's okay. And at one point the child will prefer the father not to be there <laughs> and he himself will disappear. But he will look from some distance, oh, my child is doing it so nicely. So similarly, you know, Gadadhar Pandit is training Mahaprabhu. He's becoming, okay, training wheels to begin with. This is very intense. You don't know what will happen. I'm here to support you. We take out the training wheels. Still I am here, retiring, 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 till he fin finally disappears totally behind the curtains of Totakopin. Hmm? So giving himself. Again, Mahaprabhu is known for, 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 mo for most of us as Mahavadanya Avatar, the most generous divine descent, the most magnanimous personality. But why? Because what, because of what he's giving. But what he's giving is something he has experienced himself before giving it. And before and for him to experience that, he received that from someone else. Before, who gave that? Okay. <laughs> so if Mahaprabhu is the most generous personality, Krishna in his most generous moment is because Gadadhar is rather in her most generous moment, <laughs> giving herself her full heart, her full bhav to Mahaprabhu can taste that and then he can extend to everyone the distilled expression of that, basically. Mm -hmm. So Gadadhar is Radha in her moments of greatest generosity, and as we say before, in her moments of greatest need as well. Mm -hmm. Because again, Shirad is emptying herself, giving herself to Krishna, and this is the idea of Amabhasya, to Krishna in his moment of greatest necessity. Mahaprabhu is Krishna in his moment of greatest necessity. Whatever is his necessity becomes her necessity. That's the psychology of love. If I love you, and you need something, that becomes my need. Because I totally identify with my beloved, and his needs become my needs. So whatever Krishna needs, automatically are Radha's necessities. So Krishna needs, as Mahaprabhu, he's in a very needy avatar. <laughs> he has a very intense burning desire to taste some very specific thing. He's in real need to go through that. The whole lila is required for that. So he's really in need. So Radha is watching her beloved so needy, immediately that necessity becomes hers as well. So what can I do to make that happen? So Gadada is, is there. Radha's Gadada appearing to facilitate that experience. And the point is, Krishna is so needy as Mahaprabhu, and therefore Radha is so needy as Gadada. So we have these two, the divine couple in her most needy moment. How much opportunity of service we will have in that moment then? A lot. A lot of services required. When there's lots of necessity, needy moments, a lot of service disposition is there. So the idea came some time ago that even 
those who have some affinity for Madhurya Bhav in, in Krishna Lila, and for by Madhurya Bhav I refer not only to Manjari Bhav, but also we can include Priyanarmas Sakhas, which whose services implies an interest in that side, romantic side of the divine couple. We could say they will have a double opportunity to render service in that connection in Gaur Lila. Why? Because in, in, in Braja Lila we have the idea okay, of Radha Dasyam, how this plays out in Gaur Lila. On one side you have Mahaprabhu tasting Radha Bhav. So if you serve Mahaprabhu tasting Radha Bhav, you are serving Radha, Radha Bhav. You are rendering Radha Bhav Dasyam. <laughs> it's a way of serving Radha. It's a form of Radha Dasyam, assisting the Radha Bhav of Mahaprabhu. But the second form of Radha Dasyam is serving Radha in the form of Gadadhar, in, in emptying himself totally. So you can render two simultaneous forms of Radha Dasyam in Gaur Lila, serving the Radha Bhav Dasyam to Mahaprabhu and the, and the Radha Dasyam to Radha in the form of Gadadhar. So two for the price of one. That's the generosity of of Gaur Lila always. Mm -hmm. So back to Tote Gopinath for a moment. If you have the chance, have had the chance of being there, you have seen a picture of the of the of the deities there. You have Krishna in the center, and you have Shirada and Lalita on, on, on both sides. But interestingly, all the three deities, and especially Radha and Lalita, appear with black complexion. Generally, you don't see a deity of Radha black. And they are really black. <laughs> so basically, the idea is that that they are they, they are totally immersed, basically in this uh, deep absorption in Sri Krishna that their own complexion changed to his. And sometimes we see some deities of Krishna white, mm -hmm. like the ones installed by Bhakti Pragya and Kesar Maharaj. He always installed white Krishna, which basically has to do with with the opposite idea: himself being absorbed in Shirada. But if you go to Tota Gopina, you will find Radha totally absorbed in service disposition to Krishna, which somehow reflects Gadadhar Pandit absorbing total disposition to Krishna in Gaur Lila. And Gadadhar Pandit is who is worshipping mm -hmm. these deities there in Tota Gopina. Mm -hmm. Of course, another characteristic of Tota Gopina, just to briefly mention, although you may know, is that I think that I know, maybe there may be some other, but the only deity that I know of Krishna in Padmasana, you know, sitting like cross-legged in lotus position there. And it's of course connected to what we are speaking here, which is the Tirobab of Gadadhar, because after Mahaprabhu, Gadadhar Pandi used to worship on a daily basis, Tota Gopinath. But after Mahaprabhu passed away, Gadadhar Pandi could not very hardly continue alive, basically, in separation of his beloved Goranga. So his own, he was 47 years old at that time. And, and basically he he seemed like he, he will be 130 years or something. <laughs> he was totally like in less than a year because he, as we all see, he left his body just less than a year after Mahaprabhu. But in those months, he was not able to continue with his life. So he was becoming more and more, how do you say in English when? And you become like hunched. hunched. Okay. So he was no longer able, even sometimes didn't have the strength to raise his arms to, to offer a garland to, to Gopinath. Mm -hmm. So at one point he thought, I, I'm I'm useless to continue performing this service. So I'll make the arrangements for someone else to do it. And that night, Toto Gopinath came into a dream, <laughs> telling Gadada, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Why are you organizing for someone else? I want you to worship me. And he said, I, I mean, you see my condition. I mean, I cannot even put you a garland. I mean, what can I do? I said, no, no, no. I want you to be rendering seva to me. So whatever arrangement needs to be done, I'll I'll make, I take charge of that. So you tomorrow wake up and go to the altar as usual. And you will find everything is in place for that to happen. <laughs> So Gadal Pandit obeyed that and the next morning he enters the altar and he finds Gopinath who was normally standing in Tribanga, three banded form, seated in Padmasana. So Gadadar could you know, put the garland and make a whole decoration and so on. 
So we see how so how Krishna is literally carved by the affection of his devotees and taking different forms according to the loving disposition. And of course, Bhakti Nautakura and others is of the opinion that when when Mahaprabhu left, he entered this deity. He entered the deity of Toto Gopina. There are some other opinions, but we are speaking today of Bhakti Nautakura and Gadadar Pandit. So it is said that <clears throat> that Mahaprabhu sat on the asan of Gadadar Pandit would he will speak Bhagavatam and from there he will enter the deity of Gopina. And, and the, the story also mentions that Gadadar will enter into the deity of Radha in Tota Gopina. And that's why you don't have Samadhi for any of them, basically. Mm -hmm. So regarding the passing away of, of Gadadar Pandit, also something uh, a little bit on some detail is mentioned in, in Bhakti Ratnakar of Narahari Chakravarti, which somehow describes mostly what happened in, in the next generation with Shamananda, Srinivas, Narutam, but also some words are mentioned about Gadadar's separation of Mahaprabhu. Mm -hmm. And basically how he was only remaining alive during those months, trying to share mercy, shed mercy on Srinivas Acharya because uh, he was supposed to teach him the Bhagavad. But let me share two or three lines from the Bhakti Ratnakar. It says, this, depicting the condition of Gadadra and separation, repeating Gaur Sundar's name with his eyes closed, his sights were such as hot flames, Gadadhar's. No one apart from the Lord can know how much Gadadhar suffered in Ogoranga's absence. His motionless body remained alive only so that he could bestow his mercy on Srinivasacharya. So as we may know, Srinivasacharya was instructed to go to Puri and learn Bhagavatam from Gadai Pandit. But when he arrived there, Gadadhar was, again, in his last moments, and he said, we don't have that much time. He could feel that, Srinivasacharya. And when he went to Gadadhar's copy of the Bhagavatam, he found that all the ink was no longer present there because, as we mentioned before, torrents of tears will come in his reading of the Bhagavatam. So it seemed empty, page, blank pages, although... The essence of the Bhagavatam was in that emptiness, you know, <laughs> in those tears. <laughs> and Srinivas started, saw that and he himself started to cry, you know, to further contribute to that edition of the Bhagavatam. <laughs> mm -hmm. And he realized I need to get a copy for me to be schooled by Kadadar. So he went and got a copy. And as you know, it was not the time where you just can Google and download a PDF in five seconds. It took maybe five weeks or something. <laughs> so he did that as quick as possible, but when he returned with his copy to Jagannath Puri, that other pan had already left in separation from Mahaprabhu. And just in this connection, interestingly, Srinivas Chariot is described that he, in madness, decides to go and take shelter in Srila Rupa Goswami in Vrindavan. So he goes running to Braj from Jagannath Puri, which is not just on the other side and the other corner <laughs> but somehow eventually he arrives there and when he arrives he finds that there's a big mahotsab celebration and he has what's taking place today and we are celebrating the disappearance day of Srila Rupa Goswami he has just passed away so this is too much for Srinivasacharya you know, we say that he collapses and, and but eventually when he wakes up he's there with Jiva Goswami and, and he's invited to join the school he had there in Radha Dhamma there and when we're in connection to Narutam Das and, 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 and Shyamanand and so on. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> that's on the side of Gadadhar Pandit, you know, how he passed away in deep separation of Mahaprabhu and again, deep disposition of service to him. And in connection to Bhakti in Thakur, mm -hmm. as we mentioned before, he made the point, I'd like to pass away in Jagannath Puri, but actually... He didn't. He didn't make even the arrangements for that to happen. And he passed because he wanted to make the point we mentioned, necessity of service and identification with that. And he passed away in Godrum, hmm, worshipping Gaur Gadadhar, his sister Dev. I mean, his samadhi is there now in Sonanda Sukhada Kunja, in Sri Godrum Drip. 
it's Bhakti you know, Thakur Samadhi and you walk a little bit and the other side you have Borgadada, his own deities that he worshipped. Uh, Chaitanya Math, I think they are taking care of the of that temple. Yeah. So like, he was fully absorbed in, in this worship of Gurgadar, which was everything for him. You know? He used to sing his Gudrum Bhajan, Bhajan Upadesh. You know? He will say Smara Gura Gadadara, Keli Kalam, eh, Keli Kalam. Yeah. Bhava Gura Gadadara, Push Paksha Charam. Sunu Gora Gadadar and Charukatam Baja Godruma Kanana Kunjavidum. So he basically will say, try try to remember the Lila of Gor Gadadar. That's the last verse of, of his composition in praise of Godrum. And try to become a, a, a faithful follower of Gor Gadadar. Just try to hear about the activities of Gor Gadadar. Gor Gadadar, Gor Gadadar, Gor Gadadar. That, that's the conclusion of, of, of Bhaktinath Thakur's life. Hmm? So, interestingly, whether if whether from the point of view regarding Bhakti Thakur's disappearance, from the point of view of him saying, I want to pass to leave the body in Kurukshetra or to actually leave his body worshipping Golgadhar in Godrum, the point is the same. Hmm. Yeah. Living in Kurukshetra means assisting Radha in her moments of greatest necessity. Worshipping Gadadhar in Godrum is worshipping Radha in her moment of greatest necessity as a Gadadhar. <laughs> So, so this is speaking about the same, however you may like to keep you know, identifying with extreme necessity of service and be and wanting to be there hmm, to fully offer myself millions of times. And so that's that's the worship of Gorgadada in our Bhakti Not Parivar, as Bhakti Not Thakur himself conducted it himself. He walked the talk. Hmm. This Gorgadara are like the exclusive bhajan chamber of, 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 of Thakur Bhakti, you know, basically serving Radha in the hour, in her hour of, of, of greatest needs. Hmm. So, in conclusion, we could say that we worship, that's our deity. We worship a God in need. We worship a needy God. In our traditions, God is self satisfied, He doesn't need anything. So, there's no much service opportunity for us, <laughs> interestingly. No, for example, if you analyze other tradition like like Christianity or something, they even um, do not have a very much clear picture of what who God is and what He's doing. What to speak of if He needs anything? So, therefore, generally, the practitioners there do not have a very clear picture about what will they be doing there, and there is no very clear notion of there is some service necessity. So, in many cases, what Warren is doing in those cases is just projecting. What I like the most here, I will be doing that there, eternity, but without any karmic interruption. Mm -hmm. no. <laughs> so I like to drink daikiri here, so I will be able to drink daikiri forever without getting drunk, no, something like that, <laughs> which is an idea closer to hell than to heaven, <laughs> basically. <laughs> Pretty selfish, self-centered, but, but also that's in connection because of not having a clear notion of who God is, what's taking place there, which necessities are there, if you go to Narayan in Vaikuntha, okay, you have a little more clear picture, but at the same time, you won't think that Narayan generally has needs. You know, he's Atmaram, he's self-satisfied. So, yeah, there is some Dasya we, we offer because he's God, <laughs> no, not so much because he needs. No, he's God, but I need to serve him because he is God. But again, with Krishna, that's another level. Krishna is Atma Ram, of course he's Atma Ram, but in the words of Bhakti Nautaku, he's Pararam on top of that, which you will see Atma Ram is self-satisfied. And when Bhakti Nautaku speaks about Krishna's Pararamata, he will say he has divine dissatisfaction. As a result of love comes some needs, basically. When you have love, you are no longer satisfied, basically. You are satisfied, but since love can grow always, there's always something else to attain. In that sense, you are dissatisfied. There's one section in Brihad Bhagavatam, very interesting, in which Narada Muni asks Krishna, please give me a blessing. And Krishna says, yes, what do you want? May nobody be ever satisfied with your prem. Which is, sounds like a very unique request may nobody ever be fully satisfied when attaining your prem that's my my request like implying 
there's no limit to how much you can taste in prem. So may nobody reach its the ultimate limits. <laughs> but if that sounds like a unique request, Bhagavan's reply is even more astonishing because Krishna says to him, what are you asking, Narada? I mean, that's already a fact. That's already happening. Nobody who has tasted Prem has been ever fully satisfied with that. So whatever you are asking is nonsense. Please request a more, a more fulfilling boon from me. That's already going on. Like implying, whoever is tasting Prem, like Krishna is saying, implying, I am the first example of that. Hmm. I'm, I'm tasting Prem forever and still... There is something else to taste. There is something else to taste. Mm -hmm. So there is some need. That's the point. That's a needy. But the, the needs of Krishna, the needs of Gore, are not the needs of conditioned soul. No? They are not needs out of emptiness, but are needs out of fullness. No? When you are full, there are some needs that come as a result of being full. When you are empty, there are some needs that come as a result of being empty. They are two separate things. When Krishna and, and Gopis join in Rasa Lila, they are not, they do not have some mundane existential void that they want to fill with another person and just you, oh, the other person seems to have the exact same form that my existential hole here. So I'll try to make it feel okay. Now, now I'm full. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> it's not like that. Both Krishna and the gopis are full and they get together to celebrate their fullness. That's they are need, they are in need, they are in need of celebrating their fullness. That's a neediness, <laughs> a necessity of celebration. That's another set type of necessity. Mm -hmm. But that's a necessity unto itself. That's even a greater necessity. When you have love, those the necessities that come out of love, those are the real necessities. Till you do not love, you may think you, you, you are needy, but those necessities are a joke, basically. <laughs> when you have a glimpse of how much in need they are, those who love, you realize what I need is just, yeah. I shouldn't take this too seriously. No. I mean, I, I may need to, to pay attention to that on some level, but I cannot just over magnify that as the all in all because that's not the case. Mm -hmm. So again, we are worshiping a God in need. That's an important point that we want to share, a needy God. And, and when you have in love again, the needs of my beloved become ours. Mm -hmm. So if you, for a minute, just have a glimpse of the, inten the emotional intensity that is taking place in Krishna Lila, in Guru Lila, we shared this idea the other day. Mm -hmm. in, the, in the daily dynamics of Braj, in the, in, in the daily dynamics of Nadia, there's so much necessity going on due to love that, <laughs> how to say, we basically, we will have to save the lives of God on a daily basis there. In other words, Radha and Krishna on every single day, they need to meet each other more than once per day. And every time that's not happening, they are dying in separation from each other. They are dying. That's the last stage of separation. They never get to die. So there's no never that level of tragedy, but they are about to die many times. So those who render service in proximity, intimate proximity to them, whether Manjaris to Shirada, Priyanarma, Sagas to Krishna, at some moments, the service they have to render is save their lives <laughs> by organizing the reunion, by giving support, emotional support, by invoking proper verses and songs, by giving hope through different uh, symptoms or whatever, signals and information about the next, the next twist. But they literally have to save their life of Radha and Krishna on a daily basis. And the same happens with Mahaprabhu and Gadadhar Pandit in the intensity of Guru Lila. So my point is we say, oh, we would like to go there. Okay, but you have to understand that maybe part of your service will, to, will be to save the life of God on a daily basis for eternity. So better we prepare for that. It's not just let's have fun for a while. No? I mean, it's it's fun in another way, but it's, it's a serious affair. It's, it requires lots of integrity, lots of dedication, mm -hmm. lots of identification with, with the necessity of service. That's the only way you will have an identity. Spirit, we speak about spiritual identity, but the identity will come as a result of identification with a certain service necessity. The more we identify with that 
identification brings for identity, spiritual identity. To have a form of a gopi or gopa or a kishore, Bra brahman kishore and Nitya another identity will be the the result of identification in sadhana with a particular service necessity, which of course starts at the feet of Srila Gurudev and the Vaishnavas, and we receive certain <clears throat> certain instructions, certain ways of engagement and by following that gradually that will give rise to identity identification spiritual identification brings forth spiritual identity so again and what's waiting for us in lila that's pretty intense so we have some lifetimes to still prepare it's not just a one weekend shot <laughs> but we should at least be realistic about what's actually taking place there and in theory, become familiar with that and project ourselves in a way that, in a sustainable way, we're actually getting closer to that reality. Mm -hmm. So anyhow, for for this and, and some other, for sure, reasons that may be there, but today I, I, I wanted to share some words in connection to these commonalities between these two great personalities, Bhaktina Thakur and, and the other pandits, uh, not only in relation to... The same day they are disappearing, but how this disposition of service, service identification in both of them coincide in a very mystical way and, of course, serve to us as a very deep udipana or stimulants, inspiration in our own life of service. So, okay, everything was, the time marking came on time. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if there is any, any questions, something you may like to, to uh, share, to ask about? Question, Maharaj. Yes. I've heard that in Mahaprabhu's Adi Lila, in Navadvip, he and Gadadhar were inseparable. Mm -hmm. They were always with, with each other. Mm -hmm. So what did Gadadhar do when, when Mahaprabhu was out on his travels? Hmm. Well... That was not that much time. Of course, I'm speaking objectively. Uh, subjectively, every moment seems like an age or more. <laughs> but as we know, when Mahaprabhu, one example, famous example is when Mahaprabhu wants to go to Vrindavan and Gadadhar says, I'm joining you. Because from the nowadays times, um, so we know such he asked Gadadhar, never leave my kid, become like his shadow, constant com companion, because I don't know what will happen with him. He's mad, basically. You know? This was after Mahaprabhu became a Vaishnava. <clears throat> and Gadadhar was so expert in dealing with his emotional moments, eruptions, <laughs> that such is so please never leave him. So some arrangement in which Radha and Krishna remain in close proximity in Gorlila with the arrangement of Jashoda Sachi Devi. <laughs> of course, when Mahaprabhu accepts sannyas and goes to Puri, Gadada accepts sannyas and accepts Chetras, Chetras sannyas to imply, okay, you stay in Puri, I'll stay in Puri and never leave Puri to be with you. And when Mahaprabhu says, okay, I'm going to Vrindavan now, and Gadada Pandi starts to follow him, <clears throat> and Mahaprabhu says, what are you doing? I'm going to Vrindavan. Say, no, but you accept Khetra Sanyas, which means you cannot leave the place. You have accepted that bow in, so you have you can never leave that particular domain, which is Jagannath Puri. And Gadadhar, for the first time, we could say in the Lila, is exhibiting some Bhamya Bhav, if you will, which so much characterizes Sri Radha, which is the left wing nature. In generally, in Gorlila, Gadadhar is more. In these senses, compare more to Rukmini, like more Dakshin above, more right wing, more like humble and tolerant and dealing with all the situations without saying anything. But for a moment, <laughs> the Radha nature came to make also an important point, similar to what Bhakti Nautaku said, to make a point. And, and Gada was leaving Puri, and Mahaprabhu said, No, please don't leave Puri. You accepted this Kshetra Sanyas bow. And Gada said, to hell with my Kshetra Sanyas. I don't care for that. I only accept that because of you. So if you are going somewhere else, I break all my vows to follow my vow. Like implying, 
also an important point. You accept so many vows, but all these vows have to be to facilitate the main vow. <laughs> so if the other vows are getting in the way of the main vow, probably you have to break them or to reconsider them from another side. So Gadar Pandit's acting apparently like a rebel. Like, I don't care for my Kshetra Sanya. I'm going. And Mahaprabhu said, no, 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 you stay. I'm going. <laughs> so he keeps walking. Mahaprabhu says, stop. I'm going. Mahaprabhu said, okay, do whatever you want. And Gadar Pandit walked. He crossed the line of that the limits Puri with the next place. So he broke the bow and then he returned. Of course, Mahaprabhu sent him and said, please return because if you are break your bow, that will also affect my reputation. So it seems you are more concerned about what you want than what I want. And with that, he was People like <laughs> and Gadadar fainted basically at that moment. And Sarvoma Vatacharya picked him and brought him back. But he crossed the border, like he broke the border, so like he made the point. You know? I did that for your sake. But of course, Mahaprabhu went to Vrindavan for a few weeks, then returned. And of course, also he went to South India for a few years. It was not a few weeks in that case. But, of course, nobody accompanied him with the exception of one assistant. And that was not Gadadhar, for sure. I mean, Mahaprabhu initially didn't want anyone to accompany him. No? Like more, This is more, if you will, in that sense, um, <clears throat> uh, a Jugavatar side of him. Okay, I'm a sannyasi and came to establish Juga Dharma. So sannyasi have to travel and I cannot move with other people and a big retinue. So nobody can accompany me. And, of course, everyone will, the whole Puri will like to accompany him, but they know we cannot do. It's part of his lila, his purpose of somehow we survive in separation. So Gadada was at the top of that list, somehow surviving. We, we do not have many news of what happened with Gadada in those years, but, of course, he was there worshipping Tota Gopinath in service to Mahaprabhu. And yeah, he, he never left Puri uh, with the exception of that day that he crossed the line and returned. <laughs> but the rest of the moment, he was always with Mahaprabhu. And of course, as we mentioned, in the very last years, he could no longer join personally because of what we explained. But he will accompany him in, in, in internal terms, basically. Again, this is in the dynamics of the Bhoma Lila. When Mahaprabhu accepts sannyas, leaves Navadvip. If we go to the Nitya Navadvip consideration, of course, Kadadar is always there, even depicted as basically almost living with Mahaprabhu and resting with him and accompanying him everywhere. So, <clears throat> something else? Brigupat. Maharaj, you mentioned that in every Leela, there are some uh, some rules of the game. So Ram, he couldn't accept the sages of Dandakaranya. Um, in Krishna Leela, there are also some rules. So there needs to be a, a new Leela because of that. But somebody could say then that, well, there are also restrictions in Gora Leela. There are some types of bhav that Gora also can't accept. So could the argument then be made that, well, there needs to be another leela? <laughs> which which are the bobs that Gore cannot accept? Well, uh, for example, homosexual uh, love. Mm -hmm. or Polysexual. Uh, or something like that. <laughs> or, uh, you can update today's yeah. des desig desig gender designations and create... Yeah. Or like the love of the Brahmin girls of uh, Nadia mm, and mm, so on. Mm. <clears throat> well, what we we could say because of course I, I don't want to say like the bulk should stop, should stop somewhere, <laughs> but mm. sorry. When we speak about Bhagavan tasting some particular bhava, it doesn't mean that anything goes. No, because you can say, well, but in Gaur Lila, Mahaprabhu couldn't play electric guitar like Jimi Hendrix, so there is, we need some other Lila for that to happen, <laughs> for sure. 
and and and, and that way you can just like just create your own lila. If you like to play guitar, you're okay. I'll, I'll have a place to be. I'm for sure I will be assisting him in plugging the, the guitar and all these important sevas. <laughs> the moment of his highest need to turn on the volume. And, <laughs> and, and that's why also the Bhagavatam is saying, Twam Bhakti Yoga Paribhavi Tehrit Sarojan Asesru Tekshita Apati Nanunata Pumshan. In the third canto, this famous verse, and Brahma is saying, Sruta Ikshita. Now, like you. And the whole verse is saying that you actually, according to someone, somehow someone meditates on you, you appear to that person in a corresponding form. But the sruta ikshita terms is there. Like sruta means sruti and ikshita means to see. So to see through sruti or to see through hearing, implying, yeah, you appear in whatever form devotees meditate on you, but thou, those meditations will be in, in the context of what is seen through hearing. In other words, in the connection of what Shastra is revealing. There is some parameter to that. So it's not that whatever I, okay, I like to think about this and that, and there has to be a Vaikuntha planet to facilitate my wish or something. There is a, a variety of possibilities, but in certain Shastric parameters, which also make sense in terms of, of the sensibilities of Ras as well, no? because you, one has to be educated about how that works in in order not just to whatever be daydreaming about that one lad and this and mix this with that and that will be my perfect fit. But it's not about what we can see the perfect fit. But to understand, okay, Gaur Lila is a natural extension of Krishna Lila. Why? Because in Krishna Lila there's this need and this happens like this. So. And one could say some of the things, okay, someone will like, okay, Gor Nagar Bab, you know, like, of course, of course, they will think that's taking place for them. <laughs> but even if someone will say, no, that's not happening, they may say, okay, so we need we need an extension of that for that to happen. But we would say, no, that's all, that's happening with Krishna and Vrindavan. And there's a lila for that to happen in certain parameters. Again, it's not that it can happen whatever you like, however you like. It's, that's not the way of, of tasting rasa basically so so in that in that sense we could say that that go i mean according to our consideration at godias it's not that there is another lila after gor lila that is required to further facilitate although you can say in, an, in another sense <laughs> because at the end of chaitanya charitamrita when we know the last verse of sikshastakam is quoted and krishna Lakura says this was spoken by radha so one could say, oh, so Mahaprabhu became Radha fully, as Guru says. So he was successful. And that's the end of the Gorlila, which is great. It's like a happy end to the, to the drama. But also if you think for a while, you say, well, but at the same time, Radha Bhav is, an, is bottomless ocean. So how much Krishna could taste Radha Bhav fully? How much... He really got everything he could. I mean, there's always much more to. Mm. So because of that, you need another lila. No, you just need that lila for eternity. Mm. <laughs> and that's for me the main argument for the existence of Nityanabha. We can play other arguments, but the main the main argument is natural sense, common sense. Radha Bhav is bottomless ocean. Krishna is eternally dedicated to to know its further depths in, in a Nitya lila because. He tasted that comprehensively on earth, but it doesn't mean that's over. You know? so, <laughs> and, and of course, we, we could say also in Vrindavan, Krishna perceived I have such a depth of love with Radha. I cannot pay that. I cannot even know how much I have to pay. You know, what to speak of paying that? I don't have any, the, the, the number. But, <laughs> but in Gorlila, I will try to pay back as a sadhu and trying to reciprocate and make the votes for her. But we could say, but when he did that as Mahaprabhu, trying to repay back to Radha, Radha's Gadadhar gave herself in such a way that now Krishna Mahaprabhu is in, 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 feels, I have a greater death now. So again, we do we need another Leela so Mahaprabhu can try to, no, we just need that same Leela for eternity. Mm. And Krishna is for eternity trying to do something about it. <laughs> Although his death keeps increasing more and more because the more Mahaprabhu tries to give something, Gadadhar 
is for giving himself much more. So, so we will, as Gaudius, conclude in that sense. There's no further need of any new Lila, but that same Lila becomes ever new, if you will, at, at, at every moment. And all that, again, in certain Shastric parameters that allows certain things to happen in a certain way. <laughs> yeah. Okay, something else? I have one silly question because it always upsets me when Shinivas Acharya needs to go for this Bhagavata. There was no other copy they could borrow, <laughs> like somewhere in Puri Puri, so big. <laughs> What will Satyan I am? That's what you say regarding that type of question. <laughs> there are no silly questions. <laughs> Should we chastise our grandeur or not for the question? Well, I think uh, I think this uh, this particularly lies not to be taken literally. Yeah, yeah. Because then after, after this, it said he goes to Vrindavan, like you mentioned. Mm. And then when he comes, Rupa Goswami has just passed away. Mm. Yeah. Of course, there's 20 years in between. Rupa Goswami passed away 20 years after Mahaprabhu. Mm -hmm. So it's not... and, and in, entirely, in Entirely accurate chronologically. Yes, in Bhakti Ratnakara, Srinivasachari, he goes to everybody. And everybody mm. just passes away like one, mm. one day before he comes there. So it's, it's not really accurate. It's more... Trying to, to give the... Yeah, this feeling mm -hmm. of like is missing. Mm -hmm. Which we know is pretty much present in this next generation when mm -hmm. you hear Narutam Das Thakur songs, also like I just missed all of them mm -hmm. and I'm here, which of course mm -hmm. oh yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate that. But yeah, maybe there was no copy available. <laughs> it can happen also. You never know. <laughs> he came there and someone else had just borrowed it. Yeah. <laughs> or all of them were crying so much that all of them were no more ink. So lots of tears can happen also. <laughs> is it like Lila going, to, like, uh, like Chitanya Lila? Is it going to be, because we are hearing, we are reading Bhagavatam and there is always we're finding that there's some difference here and there and then like common explanation is yeah it's in different kalpa it just happened a little bit differently and but with Chaitanya Charitamrita when we're reading we just have this one copy from this kalpa so is it going to be something a little bit different or is it going to be always Jagai and Madai and this particular Jagai and Madai like from Vaikuntha or is it going to be a little bit different here and there something happening I mean you refer to to Gaur Lila on earth in, in the in the successive yeah. yeah yeah because if it's if it's like expanding and he's having bigger depth i would imagine that it's not necessarily needs to go exactly the same way mm -hmm. perhaps everything because it's like i like to watch some movies mm -hmm. like i saw it 30 times and it's always the kids so but i could like so you have a glimpse of, of what's <laughs> going on there then. you have a, a way of finding like, dis distilling the essence furthermore and more yeah, I mean, I wouldn't have a problem with either of, of those two questions. Now, we could say the general structure of the Lila is is, is similar. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily it's a copy-paste thing that every, well, every time it's happening the same. Of course, it would be weird to think like that, exactly the same thing at the same moment with the same people. Mm -hmm. But we could say even if that were to happen like that, <laughs> externally, internally, we couldn't say it's always the same experience because there's always some crescendo if you will like like when you hear the the Gaur Astakaliya Lila or the Krishna Radha Krishna Astakaliya Lila and you study okay today they do this this time of the day this the next day they do the same thing and the next day they do the same thing today in general terms but it doesn't mean that this the same thing mm -hmm. externally it may be the same thing yeah every day cow herding every day this but internally it's a new experience, no? Which I think is an important point because the other day we were speaking with some devotees that some some people were making the case of okay, it's a long topic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that basically that you already have your spiritual body because if you don't have your spiritual body now, it means that whenever you receive the spiritual body, it becomes like a new creation and that contradicts the nature of the spiritual world, which is there is nothing created there. Mm -hmm. Something like this. Mm -hmm. 
but the point is it's a little bit black and white criteria there because because they, they will continue with the DS. There's nothing created and, and, and there's just everything is changeless there. So that means that there's nothing new there. There's no new experiences there. There are no new realizations. There are no new, I mean, so many new things are happening there. It's not that it's always the same in every single sense. It's describing Shastra Krishna's beauty is increasing at every moment. The service disposition is increasing at every, it's, there's change in the context of this Sarup Shakti. So, so it's not that there's nothing new, there's no change. There's no changes we know of changes here. No time, gunas, and death, birth, old age, and so on. But so yeah, that would be the idea. <clears throat> Just one question online. Can we go to that one and we finish with that? We have time. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. Okay. One question by uh, Abhay Karun Kuran Prabhu from uh, Alachua Mandir. Says, we often hear about Trinity Ananda as the archetype of Gaur Dasya that sadhakas can follow in terms of spreading Sankirtan and liberating conditioned souls. But can we also say that Sri Gadadhar is an archetype of Gaur Dasya in the sense of supporting Mahaprabhu's inner attainment? Yes. And in brief, the reply will be yes. Of course, it's a very nice question and I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, there's a very interesting, of course, a long topic to explore. Uh, the role of Nityananda Prabhu, the role of Gadadhar Pandit, and how the two of them, of course, represent an exemplary of Dasya in their own, in their own particular way. And of course, Nityananda is more related to, to what you mentioned, to the dissemination. And you can see that in the dynamics of the Lila. Um, and Gadadhar Pandit is more connected with with another type of dissemination <laughs> internal in the heart of Mahaprabhu. You know, like my Guru Maharaj likes to to describe the two. You know, sometimes you see it's empty. That has some. That was they brought two glasses. That now we can understand the purpose. <laughs> So you see sometimes in, in the deities of Gaur Nityananda, some deities of Nityananda, like the one my Guru Maharaj has in his Audarya monastery, Nitais, with his two arms like this. I'm showing the camera also. No? And generally when you see the deity of Gadadhar, he's in the same mudra. No? So the mudra is like full giving. But there are different types of giving there. No? Like my Guru Maharaj would say, Nitais fully giving Gaur to the world. And Gadadhar is fully giving himself to go. <laughs> so, of course, in one sense, you can say it's a complementary uh, form of Dasya. No? Because, again, what Nita is giving to the world is Gore, and what Gore is about is what he's tasting that was given to him by Gadadhar. No? So, Gadadhar mm -hmm. is giving himself to Gore, Gore is receiving that, embodying that, experiencing that, and Nita is giving that to the whole world. So, it's a team effort basically <laughs> so both of them are performing gore dasya from their particular perspective from the particular angle and personality remember one is sridada the other is balaram of course appearing in a particular mood corresponding to the lila but they are quite complementary one another there are very serious very nice series of verses in chaitanya bhagavat what burned down the stacker basically says if you want to worship Gadadhar, but you neglect Nitai, you will be nowhere. And if you if you want to worship Nitai, but you neglect Gadadhar, you will be nowhere. No? Like making clear, be careful with this. And sometimes we will praise more one, we will praise more another, as we say today. In one sense, every member of the Panchatattva can be described as the most important. No? Advaita Charya brought Mahaprabhu to the world. Srivas Pandit is being the host per excellence, giving his house and everything and representing the ultimate potential of Tatasta Shakti, Gadadhar for his own reasons, Nitai for his own reasons, Mahaprabhu himself for his own reasons. So there is place to do that. And, and, and we should be able to do that. We are glorifying Nitai. It seems, 
wow, it seems like Nita is the all in all. And you say, yes. And then comes Advaita Saptami and, oh, but I thought Nita was not Advaita. No, Advaita is the all in all. Yeah, of course. And what about Gadal? Gadal is... <laughs> mm-hmm. All of them are, 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 are right, if you will. So in brief, I will say that, no, of course, again, this may be expanded more, but we have already expanded our discourse today. So thank you for your question. So we'll conclude here, and we will have now Arti, Prashad, and some other mm. activities here. So thank you so much to all for your presence. Shri Guru Dev Ki Jai, Shri Man Mahaprabhu Ki Jai, Shri Sadbuch Gauranga Ki Jai, Tirubab Mahotsav Titi Shri Lagadadar Pandit Ki Jai, Tirubab Mahotsav Titi Shri Thakur Bhaktivinod Ki Jai, Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai, Gaur Pramananda Ki Shri